I recently bought some sheep that were sick. So it turns out I bought some sick sheep and it's caused me a lot of grief, a lot of regret. I've been really mad about this. I've been trying to have a good attitude. But I figured let's share the experience and maybe I can save someone else some grief. When we picked up our homestead and moved it all the way across the country from Utah to North Carolina, we brought with us uh, about half of our flock along with a ram that we did not own at the time but we used as a stud last year and we traded some ewes to get him. Um, so we bought, brought with us um, about half of our flock plus a new stud ram all the way from Utah. And within our first summer in North Carolina, my Utah sheep were not really acquainted with the wet, warm weather of North Carolina that is so conducive to parasites. And we lost a ewe and a lamb to barber pollworm. And before I lost that ewe, I sold my only ewe lamb that, uh, that I had with me. So I was down to uh, two ewes and a ram. And I knew that I needed to find some local genetics. I felt like that made a lot of sense to get some local genetics into my flock. And so I started looking uh, at people around me to, to figure out if anyone had some ewes that they could spare. So I finally found somebody that had three full blood Dorper ewes. Um, the price was right. The ewes were of breeding age. They were about like 10 months old. Um, like I said that they're full bloods, which is you know a big deal for my goals right now. And the best part is is that they were willing to drive them uh, to me, which is great because I don't have a trailer right now. Kind of need that for sheep. And I thought that I had found the perfect deal. And it turns out I was perfectly wrong. The purchase itself happened, uh, let's see, I'm filming this in December, and this purchase took place in October. Um, so about two, I think it's exactly two months ago um, this week that these ewes actually arrived with us. So it's these three ewes that are in the foreground right here, not this one in the corner. Um, really good looking sheep actually, but they came to me coughing. And what I've noticed is that they don't cough really when they're on grass, um, which is great. I just moved them today. I don't have a lot of grass right now. So when they have hay, they cough more, but when they're on grass, they're not coughing. So they're not coughing right now, but this is what it sounds like. So when these three ewes arrived to our little homestead, um, I incorporated them with my two existing ewes, who are right here, and my ram. My ram, by the way, is not doing super hot right now, and he seems to be exhibiting the same symptoms that these girls had, which is just so frustrating. Like, I, um, you can't hear it in my voice because I'm trying to keep it together, but I'm so mad that, uh, that I was sold sick sheep. Back to the story, these ewes came to me with a cough, which is not abnormal. I have seen sheep cough after travel, um, and it, they usually shake it within a day. So I wasn't super worried about that. Okay, but there were a few comments that the seller made that should have tipped me off to this, and I wanted to share those with you. So uh, like every, every deal, you know, whether you're buying a, a car or an animal, you usually ask the person, hey, why are you selling it? And in this case, uh, she said, you know what, they're actually great ewes. I would love to keep these ewes, but um, I have some vet bills that I have to pay off. And that should have signaled in my head of like, okay, if you're behind on vet bills, um, that could mean that you don't know what you're doing with animals. And I was just so hungry for a good deal that, uh, that I ignored that signal. And then when we were talking about delivery, uh, she was talking about, well, I, you know, it'll be probably about a month out because um, they will be at the county fair with me. And that should have signaled me too, is that like, what, like, again, not my goal, not my cup of tea, like county fairs I think are some of the weirdest things uh, in terms of like animal showing. Now, a, you know, actual Dorper show is a totally different story, uh, but the fact that these ladies were basically coming from a county fair, spending weeks at a county fair, and then coming directly to me, uh, should have been another another zinger and the third and final zinger actually happened after transportation after they got brought here um, 
and they they pulled up and you know we dropped them off on on my pasture um, which is kind of cool we've got part of it is forest part of its grass none of its good grass right now because this is a new pasture and we seeded it in like late october so uh, very little grass growing right now but she made a comment that said oh these girls are going to love it here they spend all their time in a barn so really when you add up all those zingers you get one the fact that uh the owner is behind on vet bills two you get these animals that have spent weeks in a county fair and three you get these animals that have spent even if they're not at a county fair they're they're in confinement and i found out later that they're getting fed basically pig feed not grass that was a comment she made. She's like, oh, they're going to love eating grass out here. What? That's what sheep eat. Oh, my gosh. So frustrating, guys. But I thought I found, I thought I found the perfect deal because the price was right and they're full bloods and it was three and I was looking for three and she was willing to travel and blah, blah, blah. So, like I said, these ewes came to me coughing, which wasn't abnormal to me. That had happened to me in the past. However, when the coughing did not go away after two weeks, I finally called my vet and they said, yep, two weeks is too long, let us get out there. And so we held these ewes and basically um, she checked their lungs for, you know, just the sound of if their lungs are clogged up and all that stuff. One of them had some snot going on and the vet essentially suggested like, you know what, only one of them is really, uh, seems very sick. So we are going to only give antibiotics to one of them. Um, if they were not pregnant, the vet said that she would recommend doing uh, steroids, but uh, they're pregnant, which would cause them to abort. So she said antibiotics on one of them. I think it was this one, 52, that we gave antibiotics to. And for about a week or two, I was giving them uh, some antisuppressants inside some horse treats. Uh, that I would basically jam into a horse treat and give them every single day, which was a pain and took a very long time. So after two weeks of one of them getting an antibiotic shot and all three of them getting antisuppressants, um, you'll never guess what happened. The one that got the shot started to heal and the other two did not. So I had the vet come out again. We gave shots to the other two and I kept going with the antisuppressants. And um, after about two weeks, the coughing went down. But you know what, the coughing continues. Like if I put hay out or if I come out in the morning and they haven't like grazed yet and they see me um, and it's kind of like their first little exercise for the day, they'll start coughing. So coughing with sheep can mean a lot of different things. Um, it could be as simple as like barn fever or, or transport fever, which is just kind of the general term of like, yeah, you know, dust or whatever, usually very common um, in circumstances like I described, transport and county fairs and stuff like that. Another thing could be lungworms, which is actually very common um, in the case of like cold, wet climates, which we kind of have right now. The third and probably the most worrying thing is that it could be an actual, you know, infection uh, with, with the sheep. Um, hence why we went with antibiotics for these and that seemed to help. So we're going to see what, what happens with these sheep. Um, I've kind of already mentally decided that they are on the bottom of the totem pole of my, of my flock. Um, they're probably going to be cull animals next year. We'll, we'll see what I get from them. Um, if I get, you know, a lot of ewes next year, especially from my, my other two ewes, my two existing ewes, then, then they'll probably be cull animals and I'll integrate my new ewes as breeding stock. Um, but we'll see. I will say this. They've, they've looked a lot healthier since they've been here. Um, they looked like little sick shrimps. They were constantly, um, constantly gassy, um, probably because of the food that they were eating, and uh, very sluggish. And uh, it's actually been kind of sweet to watch them around here. Like, they're more active. They run around a lot more than my other two ewes, cause, probably because they haven't had room to run. Um, so there's definitely, like, there's a good side to it. It's just unfortunate that I am the one paying the price for this because of somebody else's mismanagement. So what are the lessons here? The first lesson is probably the most obvious one, and that is probably something your, your parents taught you is that if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. I was so desperate to find new breeding stock that I went with one of the first offers I had. My other biggest lesson is like, look for the clues get on the phone with these people 
um, talk to them. Better yet would be to actually visit them. Uh, the folks I bought these from were um, probably about like four or five hours away, so I did not visit them, which is maybe a, a knock on me. But get on the phone, talk to them, ask about uh, what dewormers they use, how often they deworm, ask about what their feed is. I never thought I'd have to ask somebody, do your sheep eat grass? Apparently you have to ask questions like that these days. And here's what it comes down to, folks, is like these, uh, all these ewes, including my two and the three that I purchased, um, everyone's doing fine right now. There's still some coughing. But this is what you don't want. This is my ram. He's not doing hot right now. Um, I just gave him antibiotics uh, probably about an hour ago. Like if I got this close to him with his use, normally he'd be all up in my grill about it. Um, he is lethargic. He is not doing well. And that's really frustrating. Like I am really ticked that now my ram is um, not doing hot. I'm glad you're doing better, but I think maybe you got my ram sick. Feel better, buddy. Let's pull through. Let's get through this. Also, look at that tail. Uh, what tail is the better way of saying it. They came to me docked that, that tight. I don't like that. Um, I think that's really bad practice to dock them that tight, especially because situations just like this, if they're coughing, um, you'll know like it's impossible for me to get it on camera. It's really hard, but when they cough um, You can see probably about a full inch of the actual like sphincter and muscle coming out of the butt When they cough and I like truthfully I'm terrified of prolapse with these because all that coughing especially with young ewes, which is exactly what this girl is in front of me um, That's a big concern I'm not a perfect sheep owner, um, but I'm learning and hopefully this video has helped you learn a little bit more. If you have not seen my video about some of my biggest learnings in my past two years of keeping sheep, definitely watch that video. Like this video, subscribe to the channel, do all the YouTube things, and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for stopping by today.